Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Pablo Vidal. He is here at Yale as a visiting scholar with the Council on Latin American and Iberian Studies at the Macmillan Center. Professor Vidal is the director of the Anthropology Research Institute at the Catholic University of Valencia in Spain. His research interests include the relationship between people and nature, nomadic and transhumanist people, and immaterial cultural heritage. Today we'll talk with Professor Vidal about how mobile phone usage is impacting the lives of nomadic herders in Monaco. Welcome, Professor Vidal. Thank you very much for the invitation. Let's talk about your work and uh, the paper that you've um, done. Give us an overview. For me, the, the interest um, is and was that nomadic people are now uh, finishing. Um, only very few people are still living in tents. Mm -hmm. So it was something like uh, recording something from the past that will be not uh, survived to the future. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, I, I came to this uh, region, which is very far away from every place. And for me, it was uh, fascinating because I was able to speak and to meet uh, these uh, real nomadic people still living in tents. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you actually present yourself to these virtual stranger, I imagine, and have yeah. them accept you enough to help you with your work? This is a very interesting question. Thank you for that. Uh, it is impossible to do this work if you, if you don't have uh, local contacts. Mm -hmm. So I did this uh, work, this research, in collaboration with uh, Meknes Agricultural uh, School. So they were local partners and they make all the contacts. Mm -hmm. If not, it's, it's impossible to go and it's impossible even to visit uh, these, uh, these places, these uh, tents, because they are private. Mm -hmm. You may not uh, arrive without a previous invitation. And all these invitations and all these contacts are made by phone, by mobile phone. Uh, okay, so yeah. once you got there, what was your life like? How much time did you spend there and what was your day like? Well, uh, I have been in, in this place one week and in the previous places uh, other weeks. So uh, at last two months in, in total doing the, the field work uh, there. So every day, we visit morning and afternoon different uh, tents uh, doing the, uh, the interviews. Mm -hmm. So in this last place we did, we arrived to 20 interviews. Okay. So that was uh, great and we were very happy. So what kind of things did you ask them in the interview? Well, uh, at the beginning is, is just to understand their style of life. So everything, what are they doing, uh, which, which is uh, their schedule and their relation with the cities. Uh, we were looking for sedentarization process and the relation between nomadic and sedentarization mm -hmm. uh, people. That, that was the, the main uh, subject. But very quickly I started uh, thinking about uh, mobile phones because that was the relation between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. So now the nomadic people are connected. And I, I started realizing that one day that I was in the middle of the step in the middle of nowhere, and suddenly someone phoned me. And I said, wow, I'm in so far from any place, and there is a mobile uh, phone here. Mm -hmm. And when I arrived to the tent, I was speaking when, with, the, with the man. And after some teas, he asked me about the political situation in my country. Mm -hmm. So I realized that he was isolated but at the same time, very well connected. Right, okay. So that was the contradiction. So I start uh, working on this uh, contradiction. How yeah. long have they been using mobile phones? They um, start using the mobile phone when it was a democratic issue. At the beginning, that was uh, very complicated. These people do, don't have, they don't have a um, bank account. Mm -hmm. They don't have a postal address. So it's impossible to have a, right. a fixed uh, phone. Mm -hmm. So they, their first uh, uh, phones were the mobile. So that was eight, six years ago. So something very, very, very new. Very recent. Yeah, very recent. And still today they are using old phones without internet connection. Okay, I was going to ask you, do mm. they have internet connection? Are they smartphones? But no, they're not. They don't have 
mostly uh, uh, smartphones mm -hmm. because they don't need it. They need the phone for other purposes. So the young generations are using uh, mm -hmm. smartphones, but not them. So what are the purposes they are using their phones for? Well, the idea is, uh, as I said in the article, is um, to be nomadic, being uh, sedan uh, living a, in a sedentarization place. So mobile sedentarization, that was the, the idea. The only way to, es to continue being nomadic is having these uh, mobile phones because they are in connection with the cities. Mm -hmm. So they uh, still are living in tents, but very well connected with cities. Mm -hmm. And for that is uh, so important the, the net. So they are living w where there is a mobile net. For them it's uh, really interesting. And they have the mobile net in her head. So they know where to establish the tent and where they cannot because there is not uh, service. Service, ah, exactly. interesting, yeah. interesting. So this is all connected. And they are, this is the contradiction, uh, mobile sedentarization. So the only way for them to be nomadic, because they, they are very proud to be nomadic. They don't like to be, to be living in cities. Mm -hmm. They would like to, this is the last frontier, the last uh, border, and they are there. And when they, you speak with them, they say, no, 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 I, I, I'm very proud to be a nomad, mm -hmm. and I would like to be nomad in the future. Right, right. So this is the only way. Right. Well, yeah. that is fascinating because I can understand how the older generation would like to remain nomadic. What about their children? Are they of the same opinion, or do hmm. you see the nomadic population dwindling? This is a good point because the young generation prefer to live in cities. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm, I'm sure that 20 years uh, later, these young people will be back mm -hmm. to, to the um, old traditions. Right, they've but had enough of city life. <laughs> yeah, well, we are speaking about cities of uh, 20,000 uh, inhabitants, mm -hmm. so they, they are not uh, big cities, they civilization. Right. But for them, it's very important um, to be near the school, for obvious reasons, right. and ne near the mosque, mm -hmm. and very important, near the market. Okay. So thanks uh, to that, they may uh, do these uh, connections. Right, right. Yeah. And what about um, women? Um, I imagine the majority of the men have them, but are the women also using mm. the mobile phones? Mostly not. The, the, the point is that uh, this region is a very rural one. Mm -hmm. It's one of the poorest in the country. So there you may see that uh, modernization and uh, woman uh, uh, freedom is still an issue. Right, right. So most of them, uh, they don't have a mobile. Men are going to markets, not women. They remain in tents. And uh, even it's very difficult to, to establish a conversation uh, with them. I see. L let me say you something. I, I was once four years for hours in a tent. And I hear the woman in the other side of the same tent. But in four years, I was not able to meet them and to speak uh, to them. Wow. And even we, we start doing questions to them through the husband. And it was just uh, two meters. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, something uh, fascinating, but that should change mm -hmm. uh, in the future. But well, that happens on, sorry, in in these rural areas. Okay, Sorry. I'm curious. So when you're trying to interview the woman and the man is basically translating, could you hear what the woman was respond? The woman's response. So did the man change kind of yeah. her answer um, to suit whatever his yeah. needs happen to be? It's even worse, and the question of translation is uh, quite complicated. Because we, I don't speak uh, Arabic, I speak uh, French. Mm. So with my colleagues from, from the local university, I speak in French. They translate it into Arabic to the husband. Mm -hmm. And the husband do the question in Arabic to the woman. The woman translate it into, uh, 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 to the husband in Arabic, the husband to the local professor, and the professor uh, to me. And in all this way, of course, there are things that you, you lose. 
we realized that when we do this uh, translation, we lose a lot of things. Some of the translators do the good translation as it should be. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and especially if they are local politicians uh, there. So this is quite complicated. It's also complicated with when the translators are women. Right. Because in some cases they are not accepted. So it's, uh, it's an interesting right, issue. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the ways that mobile phones uh, have transformed um, the nomadic uh, lives. So what has actually changed? Have there been dramatic changes from the way they had used to live to now when they have the mobile phones? Absolutely. It, now they can't uh, live without the, the mobile. When we speak about nomadic people, we say they were people looking for the, the sky, looking for the clouds, and looking for rain. Now they don't need to look for the clouds. They don't need to follow the clouds. They just phone to the colleagues, and it has been raining, and it has been raining, that means that it will be grass. Mm -hmm. So that's what they are looking for. Now they know prices in the market for lambs, they are uh, connected to, to know the political issues, question about the, the family, uh, to speak with the veterinarian. So this idea of uh, mobile sedentarization, they may be sedentarian in a way, because thanks to the mobile, they can be in contact with everybody. And when they need to, to do this mobilization, thanks to the mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think there certainly have been benefits to the mobile phones. Have there been any negative consequences um, for yeah. the implementation of them? There are negative uh, consequences. One of them is that, yes, when it's raining, everybody now uh, knows uh, where the, um, the grass is. So not only local people are looking for this uh, grass, but uh, people from other regions. Mm -hmm. So now there is an overgrassing in the areas, thanks to the mobile. Mm -hmm. The news uh, goes very quickly, and for the good and for the bad. So everyone will go to the grassy areas so that the uh, cattle or sheep can graze on the grass. Exactly, but uh, too many cattle for the same grass. So right, this, is right. a, this is a big issue. Right. For, the, for them, this is a big uh, concern. Okay, yeah. so what do you think the future holds for these people? When I spoke to, to them, they were very fear, very proud to be nomadic. So they will be there. Mm -hmm. They will change to remain. So they will use technologies to, to be in the same place. Mm -hmm. And what I have been uh, watching is that they are fighting against the desert again the desertification and there you may touch the climate change and they are in the first uh, line uh, fighting against that. Right, right. Yeah. I would imagine that is a huge concern for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, are you planning on doing follow-up work on this? Yes, yes, yes. In, in the future I will follow these uh, studies on transhumans mm -hmm. in uh, Spain, in Morocco and also in other Mediterranean countries. Okay, well, yeah. we will look forward to seeing that, and I thank you so much for being here today and sharing your work. Thank you for the invitation. For more information about Professor Vidal and his research, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.